Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta, and on this third episode of Gear Talk with Elge, I have another great Finnish guitar player and a friend of mine, Thomas Vainola, with me to talk about his gear and uh, playing philosophy in general. We're also gonna see a few really amazing vintage guitars and vintage gear in general. So. Welcome to Gear Talk with Elge, episode number three. And today I have the honor of having one of the best guitar players in Finland, uh, Mr. Thomas Weinera. Welcome. Well, thank you, Elge. That's surprising, but um, I will take that compliment and <laughs> run with it. <laughs> good, good. Uh, yeah, so you have a uh, you played with a bunch of artists in Finland, like really famous one. You, you've done so many things that uh, I I don't even remember all, probably. So maybe if you would like to tell a little about yourself <coughs> and your career and, and uh, so on. Yes, fair enough. Uh, I played professionally for 20 years in Finnish groups uh, there's uh, a girl duo named Nylon Beat and uh, let's say a Finnish Bruce Springsteen type, Anssi Kela, uh, Raskasta Joulua which is a um, holiday season Christmas song as heavy metal for the whole family kind of big arena thing and uh, most recently, I've been playing with Marko Hietala. Uh, he's the singer bass player of Nightwish, and he did a solo album, Pyre of the Black Heart, which I also produced. So that's um, that's some of the stuff. And also, I have a secret life as a composer and try to do a lot of stuff like uh, commercials and. Ooh. What not? And there's also um, kind of uh, let's say a guitar hero side. I have I have one solo album out from 2011, and another at the works at oh. the moment, uh, which will also feature some of the great guitar players that have already been in. Uh, your interviews, but uh, oh, oh, wow! <laughs> uh, wow. Anyway, um, yeah, because the the I, I enjoyed the the first album and, and especially the uh, T's boogie. The, yeah, the, T.W.'s the, boogie. Yeah, that's, a, that's a, you're kind of not too Satriani kind of that yeah, style, yeah. type of uh, bluesy, mm. which I, I I had on on, on my solo album kind of that <laughs> same style song as well because. In the style of you know mm -hmm. early Van Halen and such, we need that mm -hmm. turbocharged boogie. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's what every yeah you have to pay your dues, you kind of uh, tip the hat to the, the masters. Yeah, to yeah, speak. yeah. That's and and you have a studio, so you're like a yeah producer engineer also. Yeah, uh, uh, it's called 
Sunbeam Imperial Studio and uh, very it's, it's, modest name. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty <laughs> modest. Well, it's uh, well, me and my uh, partner in crime, Sakari Sali, whom with we have the place is the thing is we we kind of respect the British attitude of uh, making things very particular <laughs> and we have a lot of gear that takes a lot of time to use like a lot of outboard stuff and analog things and synthesizers and pianos and roads and Hammond oh. B3 and whatnot they are maybe at our hectic time we can call them like slow instruments because it takes a lot of time to hook those up and mm. uh, well we try to keep them mic'd and ready to go but nothing beats the feeling of like playing a real Hammond organ yeah. or drums or or like we discuss with a real yes, amplifier we get uh, to a bridge <laughs> to a bridge here because because uh, I mean I, I've used plugins I, I've done videos of those and they're great they're they're amazing and you really can't tell a difference in a mix but hmm. playing with uh maybe you can tell I, I but at least not maybe in, in heavy metal where there's you know down tuned guitars and distortion but playing with a real tube amplifier it's it's a thing that nothing beats I guess okay. yeah it's it's a feeling thing uh, and the feeling consists of maybe kind of being a part of this history of guitar players and like um, I'm very kind of utilitarian in that that I uh, I like to use the things that are available fastest sometimes when I'm demoing something uh, I'm definitely uh, hooking myself to the universal audio thing and just open a plugin and that's about it. But if I kind of go on really playing guitar uh, as a fun thing that it used to be when I was an <laughs> innocent child and kind of didn't have to <laughs> work <laughs> for... <laughs> Um, um it's it's a joke obvious <laughs> but uh, then i i want to play the best gear available and that's why i have hoarded uh, a bunch of vintage guitars uh, i think i'm over 50 Ooh. instruments at the moment wow. and i have the basic uh, gibson and mm -hmm. fender lines of stuff and also some old amps and effects and that kind of i hmm i would say that's that's the best stuff available i i can't get over it yeah, yeah. the older the better <laughs> like 50s and 60s all the good stuff came out then i don't know why i, I think it's part of because the uh, instruments are kind of like good wines. When they age, mm. they become pe better. Because I, uh, I had this uh, really well-made, or I have a bunch of custom ESPs. Mm -hmm. It's really beautiful, my signature. But I, it just didn't have the mm. sustain, the the, the stuff. But I just kept playing, and and that's the main guitar I use in Siren. Like maybe. Two years ago, it started to hmm. sound and open, and and, hmm. and I was like, "What's going on?" And I was like, "Well, as I played with this guitar, like toured all over the world, sweated everything, and now it starts to, you know, maybe the guitar finds itself or something." But I I think it's it's part of the you have to play it, and and then the, the I don't know the wood cells or, hmm. or whatever, but. Uh, I, I definitely agree. The the older mm. the instrument, the, the better it it sounds and, and feels, because there's you know history to them. I guess it's same with people. The older we get, the wiser <laughs> we get. <laughs> Hopefully, I sure hope so. <laughs> so. Well, I think as guitar players, we can definitely kind of go there 
with uh, talking about feeling things. Mm-hmm. Um, we are being sold a lot of stuff kind of by just reaching out to that special point <laughs> in uh, inside. And okay, guitar players might be pretty conservative. We like to have uh, Jimi Hendrix on the cover of uh, guitar player for uh, <laughs> 50 years straight. Um, and okay, th- th- that's a part of the thing. Yeah. But um, if we co- go kind of scientific, it just might be that like those billions of notes played on this. Is this like is this things. like real vintage or is it? Yeah, this relic? is a '64 oh, Stratocaster, wow. uh, refinished but uh, otherwise original. Uh, it's a recent acquisition. Uh, it was kind of an expensive uh, holiday in Stockholm. I uh-huh. went to see John Mayer, who, oh. who I love uh, dearly. Um, his music, but the person, <laughs> yeah, sure, too, of course. And um, I went with a friend, Riku Karvonen, he's a great Finnish guitar player, and we kind of went and tried this thing. Yeah. Obviously, we. Uh, uh, checked the internet for vintage guitars mm-hmm. beforehand and we went and then um, kind of we had to go the next day again before the the flight yeah. left uh, back home and this time we brought uh, Harry Koski uh-huh. who's a friend and um, the president of uh, Mad Professor Amps he knows a lot of uh, lots about everything but he was kind of, um, let's say, uh, a safety. He kind of, <laughs> yeah. we needed people to kind of push the thing over the edge because the price was, of course, hefty. Uh, and uh, yeah, I had my drummer friend, Anstin Nykänen. Oh, he also okay. plays in um, Marko Hetela's yeah. band. Jarmo Nikko is a legendary oh, guitar yeah, player he, in yeah, Finland. He, yeah. he did thousands of tracks on albums. And Antti Härmä. Oh. who's an excellent guitar tech. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's trying to retire at the moment, but <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I'm, so good I'm, I'm can... giving a hard time <laughs> to him with it. Okay, and, and then we were a bunch of people and we kind of got this hubris and <laughs> suddenly I'm kind of tapping all the accounts I have and kind of piling it up and, and like, give me a bit of discount. And, and then I'm leaving with a, a strat to die for and well um what can i say yeah. it, it's a it's a great instrument it sounds really good yeah i i i, I think i haven't touched even touched <laughs> guitar this old so i have a 58 there you too you have yeah and a 68 damn <laughs> but uh, that's not kind, kind of longer <laughs> than <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah i i love these old things and um, if I've done something, let's say, wise in my life, um, uh, I did my fair share of keeping up the um, restaurant and nightlife in <laughs> Helsinki for a long time. But um, I also been um, doing some, I would consider it wise to kind of invest to these things. And yeah, yeah. there's um, not more of them coming. The prices are, of course, kind of ridiculous, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, I haven't regretted any of this yet. And I have yet to sold, uh, I mean, sell any of these. So, um, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, I'm happy playing these old things. And w- when I do plug in at home in like, in no other uh, meaning than to yeah, enjoy the yeah. moment and play um, to myself, then I, I dig these old things, and, yeah, and that's about it. It's it's a lot more healthier to spend your money on good quality instruments than to <laughs> bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I I I I, I totally agree because I you know I I done my share too, but uh, but I haven't done in uh, any more. So uh, so uh, I I've, uh, I haven't 
gotten into that yet because I'm uh, afraid because <laughs> I am an addictive person. Uh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Uh, here, here. Where will it <laughs> lead me if where I will would? It end? So I'm not even sure if I dare to play this instrument because I might. <laughs> yes, you will, and you will love it. <laughs> <laughs> cool. But hey, that's a, that was a really nice. Uh, introduction and even more about the the, the philosophy and stuff mm. stuff so but uh, I mean you have a bunch of uh, rigs and, and amps and gear for different uh, situations and now we're we're at your home home studio mm -hmm. and uh, this is kind of like we, we discussed briefly with Thomas it's kind of the the, the home setup and the, the the small setup so maybe if you can tell mm -hmm. a little about what is it and why and mm -hmm. yes, sure. Like that. Uh, yes, we toured Europe recently with Marco Hietala's band. Um, this uh, February, I'm kind of fresh back from there, and the rig I use with him is kind of huge. It has um, two amps. Uh, Mad Professor amp oh. and uh, Bogner Ecstasy, which is uh, kind of my mainstay and my um, trusted yeah, amp, I, I, amp for I, I, anything uh, yes. that's kind of modern or high gain. Yeah. And I have actually two of them now because you sometimes need. <laughs> Uh, Why yeah. have one when you can have two? But it's yeah. but, uh, <laughs> fair. You all have to yeah. have spare. Yeah, it's it's a, yeah. it's definitely yeah. that's that's the point. Um, and it's kind of controlled with MIDI. We have a backing track system that the keyboard player op operates, and I have a MIDI file uh -huh. in there in a program called QLab. Okay. And that shoots the MIDI signal to my pedal board, and it has a looper. This. Uh, RGM Masterman oh, yeah, PBC, yeah. and that controls my Eventide H9s. I have two, and a bunch of other MIDI things, uh, switching the amps, and basically I don't really have to step ah, on the board okay. at all if I don't want to kind of use the wah wah or, okay. or boost something. Or then there is, of course, uh, <laughs> four expression pedals that I have hooked up. That's okay. one's for delay, one's for reverb, uh -huh. one is for controlling the um, mastermind, and that can kind of um, twist the signal. Mm -hmm. uh, and we can control, let's say, the Chase Bliss pedals uh -huh. that are pure analog, yeah. but they take a voltage control oh. uh, signal, VC. Um, a signal and MIDI can be kind of converted to that and uh, it sounds pretty complicated but it means I can have um, an expression mm -hmm. pedal to control my gain oh and that's wow. that's pretty cool I've been wanting to do it for uh, since I was born <laughs> and like we do it with uh, the sneaker you know like kind of <laughs> yeah but the, yeah, the yeah. gain button <laughs> no no it's too much uh, it's too little <laughs> and, and that's when you see a guitar player kind of yeah. on stage, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's what they're doing. Uh, and now I can do it with a control, with a pedal, with a oh, wow. kind of straight yeah. posture and kind of <laughs> enjoy. Well, that's, I, I, uh, I haven't actually even realized that you actually could do that. That's cool, because uh, yeah. usually people use expression pedals for, you know, delay yeah, levels yeah, and stuff, amazing. but... Uh, yeah, what, why not adjust yeah, why the not? gain level? Yeah. It's pretty pretty it's cool. handy. So you don't, I mean, the way you also do it you, with the guitar's yeah, volume, but sure. then you usually lose highs, whatever, sustain and stuff. Yeah. Now I, I guess you, you know, you keep the volume full and then you just control yeah. it. Yeah, like. it's kind of constant tweaking, you know, uh, like it should. You're yeah, always yeah. changing mics, yeah. you're, you're like doing stuff with the volume, yeah. the tones and whatnot. Mm, cool. Maybe it's because I don't need to kind of step on the board. I, I need something to do. <laughs> no, but yeah, it, it's a great bunch of equipment and it's been working. That's also a miracle. Kind of really good. Yeah. I had some problems um, at um, kind of we grounded the whole oh. thing. But um, custom boards in Hertoniemi 
Finland, Kimmo yeah. Araluoma and Eetu Lehtinen, yeah. they are doing a great job keeping all the Finnish guitar players happy with building some excellent pedal boards. Yeah. I have five of them at the moment. Uh, and that, that's one. Uh, yeah. This is kind of the smallest one I have yeah. for maybe, let's say, an everyday freelance gig. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then I have uh, a tad bigger one. And it's kind of a hybrid. It has uh, the Morningstar controller. Okay. So I can control yeah. some of the uh, digital things. Mm-hmm. But the kind of the gain stru- structure is that that I do kind of old school yeah. by stepping so, on so, things. So you like uh, you you use your or you create your gain with with pedals, uh, or is it yeah. does it depend? It depends. It depends. Yeah. 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 When it's high gain stuff, it's definitely the Bogner mm-hmm. if I can choose. Yeah. Uh, if I only get to have one amplifier like this one. Um, then I'll do the gain from the pedals mm-hmm. because, yeah. of course, it hasn't, yeah, it doesn't have the channels uh, and kind of it's usually it's not the gain you want uh, in yeah. every gig to kind of uh, d- dime the amplifier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it depends on the yeah, job, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. And nowadays, I think the <clears throat> the preamp or amp like distortion pedals mm. like the the Freeman you have there which is my my uh, uh, my favorite mm-hmm. you, you can get really good amp like distro- distortion mm. with the pedals and you can basically plug into any kind of amp but uh like you said of course if it's possible to have a you know honey yeah, the real thing. cranking yeah. real thing it, it is real thing is a real thing but it, this is uh, also very mm. very cool and i i, I use the, the freeman live live with with Cyrus. Mm-hmm. we do a lot of fly gigs and stuff so uh, but mm-hmm. uh, on the on the albums and stuff i i use real stuff yeah it's cool that everything is kind of possible nowadays and it's all a matter of kind of how much time and how much yeah. space and how much money for mm. the production yeah. you have yeah. and yeah and then you go go with that yeah but or uh, if you have a guitar tech or if you have to carry everything yes. by yourself that's <laughs> yes yeah it's yeah oh, to have a guitar have a tech, g- that that's heaven like you know yeah being yeah. handed a guitar yeah. that's yeah, yeah. in it's, tune it, it's it's really i mean Sometimes we 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 have with Sarah. Sometimes not. It's a matter of economics, but mm. it, it's always a pleasure. Although my gear is is the same, no matter if I have it or not. But it's it's such a li- relief mm. to have a good guitar check because yeah. you don't have to worry about anything. You just can mm. you know play. So that's a yeah, that's something. And yeah, well, by the way. Uh, there is going to be a rig rundown thing about the whole big ah. touring rig rig I'm using okay, with Marco. If it's out, when this is out, I will put the link maybe now somewhere there or then the link will be by the end of this video. So check that out also. Cool. But yeah. Uh, We've talked so much, so maybe, <laughs> but yeah. it's 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 really really nice to chat. Maybe it's, if you can uh, go through some of these pedals and yeah, sure sounds and you know uh, uh, there's a really nice tape echo and stuff. So uh, yeah, we could kind of go through my um, let's say this is the Sunday drive rig where I I just play whatever I feel like playing at the moment. Uh-huh. Um, I have a 64 Fender Princeton. That's a real 64. Yep. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. Of course. Yes. Uh, and this is a Uniface 3 uh, by a Finnish guy called Janne Paasonen, who does these really old school oh. kind of wipe things, and that's a full tone uh, tube tape echo, and I have a couple of pedals there hooked up um, this uh, little green wonder that's the hand wired mad professor thing is it like a tube screamer type or uh, um, i guess 
it could be but uh it doesn't actually sound anything like uh, i have a a pretty old tube okay. screamer but that, it's an overdrive that's, right it's, yeah, an, it's yeah. an overdrive yeah, yeah. yeah. and there's a dry bell unit uh, 67 it's a kind of combination of a boost and um 1176 kind of compressor uh -huh. and there's a kind of a range master eq thing oh, so it, it's okay. a kind of thing to um, sadly or not so sadly kind of boost everything a bit okay. So that's like on. I, I order it <laughs> because I saw a Pete uh, Thorn video. I've seen. <laughs> I, I've ordered a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because he's because so good. Pete, oh, Pete he, he makes everything sound yeah, so good yeah. that I suddenly just must have it. But um, yeah, he's so good. I mean, he's great. Yeah, he's yeah. doing a great job. Uh, respect. <laughs> and I think the 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 manufacturers like that too because I, I don't know how many pedals or stuff mm. I bought after I've <laughs> seen P thorn with it. oh I I can't live without that yeah. <laughs> yes okay cool but um, yeah maybe I'll kind of yeah if you push on buttons and yes kind of let's see where that leads us I'll turn everything off mm-hmm Obviously, the um, tape echo makes a nice <whistles> sound uh, to have in the background. This is the basic amp sound uh -huh. uh, with the reverb. Then um, I'll put on the uniphase that also has a kind of a boost uh -huh. when you turn it on. Yeah, it's a great one. Then uh, I use the uniphase like ever so subtly. I turn it now it's more obvious but I like to use it I've heard that Mike Landa who is kind of the king of uh -huh. guitar players uh, <laughs> Uh, for us um, freelancers anyway, uh, he likes to do something like this. To have just a tiny amount of modulation wow. going on. And I, I find it, it pretty interesting. You don't kind of hear it, but no, if but you it take it away, you will kind of miss it. On again. Yeah, because the the sound with that engaged, it's more three dimensional. Or yeah, something like you, that. You feel like you're in a womb. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, let's it's, get back to let's the get womb. Back to the, oh. oh, that's that's. <laughs> yeah. well, I mean, we the sound did, hugs. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, but we, that, that's that stuff. It's it's. I mean, it's it's. Uh, it sounds amazing uh, to. Be in in this room and, and ho hopefully uh, that will you will experience this the way I am now because it's it's a beautiful thing. Okay, then uh, let's put on the tape echo. That's um, there's something about real tape echo. Um, Wow. 
It's just yeah. smooth. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Obviously, it's pretty hard to tell if it's tape echo or the the emulations mm. are so yeah. close. But I I dig the vibe. Of course, there's another kind of preamp in there, and it all adds up. Mm, yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. You get these tiny amounts of gain and yeah. whatnot, and and it keeps you or your sound warm at night <laughs> or during the cold Finnish winter, which we haven't seen this year. Obviously, there's no climate change. Uh, okay, and then we'll add the dry bell. Again, it's a very subtle yeah. difference. But it all adds up. Then, and let's turn on the little green wonder by my professor. And we have the whole sound here. That's my feel good. Feel, yeah, rig that's definitely for feel at home. Yeah, I know. You know, if I, if you feel sad or anxious or miserable, <laughs> try to get around to Amos. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, he he have this set up. So after this, everything will be just fine. Yeah. You know. I mean, yeah. It's all good, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, shall we check out your? Yeah, let's hook up my hook up your freelance thingy. Freelance thingy. So now uh, we have a really beautiful instrument again, and we go through the Sunday Drive pedal board. Is that what <laughs> you call it? Well, um, this this is the smallest one I have that has the kind of essential things mm -hmm. um, you could need on a basic gig of any kind, I guess. Yeah, and. It's um, kind of friendly to carry, and yeah, I, I could do most any of my gigs with this one. Um, it's basically all you need: some gain, some yeah. modulation, uh, reverb, and delay, and a boost, and a wah. That's it. Yeah. Do you know the 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 order of the? I guess this is the last one the boost yeah. why is the first mm -hmm. and then 
probably your drives and then the echoes and stuff like the the usual order or yeah the echoes um, are there the last things yeah. in there so it's the drives the modulations and then the echoes yeah because if you have would have a echo before drive that usually don't sound that yeah well it, it makes it kind of it makes the delay very very obvious of yeah, course when yeah, it goes to yeah, the yeah, yeah. Yeah, overdrive, yeah. but that's also a cool sound if you like. Yeah, it. if you're into, and the guitar. Uh, tell me a little about it because it's it's. Uh, I assume it's another. Yeah, it, it's a it's a '67 Gibson um, uh, .335, and this one, I've been looking for a good one for ages, and now. Uh, I played the last seven years uh, with this one. Oh, was it six? Well, anyway, with Ansikela, I've been mostly playing this guitar. Uh, it's um, one of my favorites that I have. And when it came to, um, it's a famous, uh, famous guitar shop in Finland called Kitara ah, Yeah. They had it in their website. It kind of popped up. Uh, I left everything. I uh, <laughs> took my car, drive, drove there, and kind of already had my plastic <laughs> in the air when I <laughs> came through the door. Because uh, I have had it so that I was trying an instrument there yeah. at Kitarapaya, and someone bought it from my hands on the phone. <laughs> and uh, obviously, I could have used the phone too. I don't know why, why I didn't, but uh, luckily I got this, yeah. and um, this is everything I need in in a rock and roll sound. I think it it sounds just just right. Yeah, it's the um, they are not the puffs and oh. and not the um, pad number uh, pickups. Mm -hmm. They are the so called T tops. Okay, that is kind of the. Um, late 60s and early 70s classic rock sound kind of like the Agnus Young sound mm -hmm. yeah yeah and this definitely has so are they like, are they like uh, not as hot or what's the what's the difference they are a bit hotter than the past I guess okay. uh, oh. with some more uh, middle uh -huh. going on in there but um, yeah it's just the right frequency i think it's a great guitar and it has it has been played a lot during the recent years and i have not spared it in any way so i've kind mm. of dropped it many times and um luckily there's no great damage uh, <laughs> but I, I think this should be played yeah yeah um, yeah are, definitely no, no use just kind yeah, of yeah 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 Keeping them at home. Wow. Um, yeah, and this sounds like rock and roll, I think. <laughs> yeah. It, yes. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. And well, the pedal and board. You, you had it. You had only the OZD. Yeah. On, on, and a little bit compression, I guess. Yeah, this is my. I could say if if you count the amount, these are my two favorite pedals of all time. Uh -huh. Mad Professor's Forest Green Compressor, and Full Tones OCD. Yeah. I have at least three of both of them. Oh. And they are found in all of my. Okay, okay. Pedal boards because I. Um, that's the sound I'm used to playing with. Yeah, yeah. And if I need more gain, I'm just stacking it before this OCD. So this is kind of ah, my. Okay, so that's okay. Yeah, that is the um, the main pedal. And if I I need to boost it, I'll have uh, the symbol, also mm. by Mad Professor, and the simple symbol pre driver. And let's hear them. Or the 
the uh, basic symbol. <laughs> What what's the difference between the pre-drive and the overdrive? What is the? I mean, they sound a bit different, but do you know the what's the 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 concept of? of? <laughs> it is a bit in the dark for me. The obvious <laughs> guitar uh, playing uh, moron difference is that this one has no knobs. <laughs> this one has four knobs. <laughs> uh, does this answer your question? Uh, I, I guess uh, the pre-driver, it has, it has something to do with maybe a bit of compression. Mm -hmm. I think it, it, it could even be kind of a secret. But we can try and... There's obviously gain, yeah, and maybe a bit. Top but there's end. there's no no lights. The hot no, it, or it's cool. only hot okay. or cool, and we're cool. So I really love that because the, the less, <laughs> yeah, less is more in yeah. this case. Wow, uh, it it stacks good with the OCD. Mm -hmm. I sometimes also use a uh, a clone that is the kind of I don't have the original oh. clone, but I have there kind of remake okay. of the clone, okay. the, the red thing. Yeah. And there's, oh, yeah, there's that, obviously yeah. many versions, many manufacturers have a clone thing going on. So they are also really good with the OCD okay. for a lead tone. Um, but um, these ones I have here now, maybe I could switch one of the symbols mm -hmm. to a clone, but um, I've been happy with this. <laughs> Uh, with the both of them, I get kind of a lead tone already. Yeah. yeah. Add some delay. And you have the the compressor, I guess, on. Yeah, it's on. on the... Like at all times, okay, yeah. unless I'm using the Friedman, which is kind of, it's so high gain that I don't really need it. Yeah. Uh, and it, that's really a lot. So <laughs> you don't need a compressor with it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. But um, I'm also using the OCD with the Friedman. Mm -hmm. It's kind of maybe giving a consistency to okay. the sound. And your the the Friedman is also before the OCD. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. kind of you could say the OCD is it's like, like your, my amp. Your preamp. Yeah. 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 In, a, okay. in a way. In a way. In a way. Yeah. 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 And it's not really transparent and amp like <laughs> <laughs> as all pedals nowadays. <laughs> I guess every guitar player needs a yeah. pedal that doesn't sound like anything. <laughs> it's okay. I'm I'm joking. I'm uh, this is uh, bad behavior. Obviously, um, it's good to have pedals to like. I just had actually like demoing the other sound yeah. that build up by yeah. really small yeah. increments but um uh, yeah I, I really love the ocd i, I don't know why it, it do, has do, always been really uh, just because i i haven't actually i think i haven't played one but I, i've mm. read that the the they are different from like each year or yeah is, is it, you have is to it sell like, more yeah is it like real or do you actually notice a difference between like different mm. editions or, or is it just like you know mm. this has this thing in there and that's mm. better and then you're like 
I haven't done uh, a de- decent A-B test. Okay. I could. Uh, I have yet to do one with uh, voltages mm-hmm. because it can be operated by, with uh, 9 volts or 18 okay. volts. Yeah. And I, this is the one I bought uh, uh, 2007. Must be kind of the first generation, mm-hmm. and I have it with uh, 18 volts. Okay, I think at least. Uh, so I'm, I'm not really. This is not like scientific. Yeah, I don't have um, an EQ curve or something that could kind of show mm-hmm. what it does or, or the harmonic yeah. peaks or anything. So I'm kind of playing it by ear mm-hmm. and. I think they sound pretty much the same, all three of them. Okay. Okay. What they yeah. do, of course, there's so much that is changing. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. you change your guitar, it sounds yeah. different. You change your amp. Yeah, yeah. You have a different day. You have a different ear to something. Yeah. Um. I'm not that particular. That being said, um, I do have a undertone audio. A uh, guitar cable that you can switch the capacitance really with okay and that's that's really subtle but it's it's basically like if you have a longer guitar lead yeah, yeah. what it does is kind of it changes the sound so that it's it's almost like an EQ because okay. w- w- you double the um, the length of the guitar cable the kind of the crossover point of um, maybe it's the high pass filter or um, probably something like that. Uh, yeah. th- there's a resonant yeah. peak, yeah. anyways, and it kind of shifts okay. where okay. it's at. And I do know that when I use this, um, this is um, reveal um, the the um, guitar cable mm-hmm. I'm using, um, and that has it does something around. Uh, Three to four k. Okay. okay. That I like. Yeah. Really subtle difference. Okay. Okay. But I mean, it, it, that's true because the longer cable, mm. you lose high end and, yeah. and stuff. Because I, I, like, I have like probably I don't know fifty meter. Because we have the the monitor in here, everything. Yeah. The, the brains of our stage system, mm-hmm. the side of the stage, and if the stage is big, I just have a long, long snake, and I have mm-hmm. the 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 DB plus, and there's a buffer. buffer yeah. So I have that always on, mm-hmm. and if I take it off, I, I can the sound becomes a lot darker and yeah, yeah. So there, sure. there is a definitely when you have a lot of cable, there, mm-hmm. there is a actually pretty huge difference. Yeah, yeah. There. So okay, okay. Uh, wow. But the buffering game, that's of course something you need to be aware of. Uh, your cables too. Um, I do have cables that are not really something really hi-fi, mm-hmm. but mostly they are some good quality things. Uh, of course the pedal boards have been built with the Van Damme or Sommer things and yeah. they are kind of top notch but yeah you need to be aware of that but also sometimes you kind of you want that let's say verse sound mm-hmm. that is darker or kind of lo-fi yeah yeah and then then you kind of reach for a pedal that does that yeah yeah and Mikko Kosonen another guitar player that uh that uh I I I done mm. done this. So he he actually, it was a pretty smart thing. He said that I, he he thinks that there isn't a bad gear. Mm. It's just how you use it. I mean, a bad <clears throat> considered bad or cheap pedal mm. could mm. be just the right, yeah. the best pedal for that. Sure. What you are looking for. So it doesn't have to be. Uh, it's just yeah, like you said, the, how, how you how you use. But of course, if you want to have a really clear and you know high mm. fi sound, then mm. you have to have a high fi yeah, you gear. Go, yeah. But if you mm. want to have like you know fuzz and shoegazing and dark, then it's 
mm. you know, you just throw in something. Yeah. All those orange and green patch bay ca- cables that <laughs> like. And yeah, there's there's so much you could say about guitar gear. <laughs> and uh, if uh, if I want to say something, it's the best gear is the gear you can you can use and it's kind of it's there and it works <laughs> there's some, after that it's all a matter of taste yeah 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 cool okay th- those were the the gain stages you have yeah. and then the the strymon delay uh yeah then you a, have a well yeah that's brigadier oh. and that's i actually just saw um a rig rundown by uh, Tom Bukovac. Uh-huh. He is a great, great guitar player doing these Nashville uh, mm-hmm. sessions. Yeah. He's yeah. been playing on hundreds of uh, albums and this is his favorite delay. Uh-huh. And I, I had it a long time too. It, it's a good one. I, nothing special about it, it just sounds good. There's a phaser. Aha! Uh-huh. The earthquaker. Th- those they then make pretty wild All stuff. All kinds of fun okay, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's it's a phaser. Yeah, it's a phaser. Phaser is not the easiest of all pedals. Uh, I've been pretty picky about them, changing them all the time. Uh huh. Then there's a chorus. This is uh, a Mike Landau thing. It's an Arion chorus that has been modded. Uh-huh. I don't know how, but this is kind of one of the. <laughs> it's a chorus. It's, it's a chorus. When you need a chorus, there's a chorus. Yeah. Uh, the flint, I guess everybody knows this, it's a um, tremolo and a reverb. So it's pretty handy. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, there's a decibel pedal. It's a clean boost. It's also a uh, a buffer. Buffer, like mm. yeah, that's that's more, yeah. So it's good. It's what I what I like, cause I had a. I can't remember what I had before this because I, mm. I mainly use it to boost the solo, so I don't have mm. to rely on the on the sound sound guy. And this, what I like, this, I, I think it doesn't really change your sound yeah, no, at all. It's, it's just boost because some yeah. some of those what I, what I have they 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 added bass or or mm. something, and that was kind of like yeah, I, I just want wanted it. I just wanted a volume boost that mm. doesn't do anything else and I think that's really good for that transparent yeah <laughs> transparent and amp like uh, boost be, before there was the decibel I used um, a micro boost or was it the MXR the, the yeah, white the one. white one. yeah yeah but I used to go through them like they yeah, were I t-shirts because they always broke and then oh. you kind of um, replacing the switch was like almost the same price than yeah. <laughs> buying a new one. So I'm pretty happy with the decibel. Yeah. Hey, what? Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Yeah. Clyde Deluxe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> wow, face. It's 
sounds like a wah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you, you have it, because uh, I, I have the same, so how, mm -hmm. how have you... Because there's the... Yeah, there's a switch. There's a standard being. Jimmy and mm. the whack yeah. deep mode and the game... game yeah, I have it on whacked. Whacked, yeah. That, that, I that's, guess that's, the, that's the, the kind of the deeper... Yeah, I have that. Yeah. I, I have mine on whacked too. This is... Uh, Jimmy now. Jimmy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, I guess the um, boost is kind of higher. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit like... Oh. Oh, mm. oh. Yeah, the shaft one is it's kind of pretty. Yeah, that's it, the, it's uh, so high that I yeah. don't really yeah. Yeah. hear it properly. Maybe the middle one is kind of the most basic thing. Yeah. That's what happens sometimes. <laughs> no, put some gain on. <laughs> put some gain on. A wah. And, and a wah. And, and suddenly you find and yourself you, yeah, without a choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not called guitar players for nothing. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I mean, so, yeah. Hey, uh, we can talk for hours but i think uh, we will finish this time here so thank you thomas for your time thank you mr valo virta this has been a pleasure thank you and uh, hopefully you enjoyed this as much as i did if you like thumbs up subscribe and so on and uh, i will put links to thomas uh, social media sites uh, links etc uh, to the description below. So uh, until next time, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye. Bye.